um, came into South Sudan quite quickly and um, announced that it would mediate this process. Um, and to many that, that made sense, uh, that the region is, is the closest, it has the most interests, um, and, and it would be the most engaged in trying to resolve the conflict. And on the one hand, that's absolutely true. On the other hand, some of those interests have complicated matters um, at the negotiations. Um, we saw Uganda step in um, to, to defend President Kiir, to secure Juba, and to really push back the armed opposition that were, um, that were moving on Juba, potentially um, seeking to overthrow the government. We saw Sudan come in and, and provide various support, um, various support to the armed opposition, limited support, but still support. Um, we've seen other regional tensions, um, such as between Ethiopia and Uganda, color the way that they've engaged in the process. In March, when EGAD called time on, on their process um, and, and announced the formation of, of EGAD Plus, Crisis Group released a statement um, suggesting that we needed to resume talks immediately. So the EGAD process broke down for a host of reasons, um, but, but the single biggest one was that the warring parties felt that they didn't need to make the compromises necessary for peace. Um, and the reason they felt that was because each had various actors in the region that were quietly supportive of their more, um, more uncompromising stance. When we, when we saw EGAD Plus um, and we saw the announcement of this, it, it's a way in some ways for the region to bring in some of these, um, some of these other actors, the African Union, the UN, and perhaps even the US and China who do have the influence over the region. In theory, the weight of the world sits behind the EGAD process um, and, and that includes uh, there are US, UK, um, and Norwegian special envoys um, that, are, that are present and, and supportive of the process. We've seen the Chinese take quite a lot of interest. Um, so as we're looking towards the future and, and we're looking at how, how we move forward, we're seeing um, quite a lot of, of movement, um, some reshaping of, of EGAD, um, perhaps the greater role for the African Union, who's appointed a former head of state from Mali um, as their special envoy, so that's a much more senior level of mediation than we've seen so far. So there are all of these different um, different actors and, and different groups that would like to be involved in this process, but really what's going to be core is, is that whether or not they're able to unlock some of these regional divides that, that were so difficult for EGAD to unlock um, within itself. Thank you.